Happy Easter. It's my last time I get to say that. Next weekend we'll be celebrating the Ascension, and the next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Both of those are Easter feasts, but I'll probably say Happy Ascension next Sunday, just as a little forewarning. Jesus says to us today, whoever loves me will keep my word. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. If we love God, we're going to keep his word. Now, this is true in our love of God, but it's also true in our love of other things. If you are in love, you will keep the word of whoever or whatever you are in love with. Think of teenage love or high school love or college love or when you were first married or God willing as you are still married. Is it not true that when we are, in love, we are in love, we will find out what the other person desires and we're going to do everything we can to fulfill it? When you are in love, you are going to do absolutely everything you can to please this other person. When people are in high school, they change the way they dress, the way they act, the music they listen to. And then they also try to figure out everything that that person desires and wants. The food they like, the things they like to do in their spare time, their free time. Macho men will watch chick flicks out of love. Macho men will paint their bedrooms pink when they get married and have flowered wallpaper all throughout the house. Because when we love, we are going to do what we need to do to show that love, even in the most smallest detail. When we love, we want to honor the person. We want to keep their word. We want to please them. It's true in the world of sports. I coach. And my athletes who literally love the sport will do anything that I say to stay on the team, to run varsity, and to excel. Now, I don't coach football, but I find football to be a very interesting sport. With like cross country and track, you often compete 15 plus times in your season. In football, eight games the whole year, that's it. And if you're sidelined, if you don't play, you don't, ever, you don't even ever see the field. And yet they practice all year long. Why? Because they love. And they will keep the word of that coach because they love. If that coach says take a 35 pound weight, lift it above your head, and run wind sprints, they do it. I watch them, I'm just like, they're fools. If they were real men, they'd be running five miles with that above their head. <laughs> but why do they do it? Why do they keep the word of the coach? Because they love. Because they love, they're willing to do absolutely ridiculous things. And this is what Jesus is asking of us. Whoever loves me will keep my word. Now, of course, when we love, though, it's not hard. It's not hard to die to little things in our life when we, when we love. To paint our bedroom pink or to put up flowered wallpaper. When I was in high school, I changed the gum that I ate, the music that I listened to, out of love for girls. We can change things, we can adapt. The question is, are we willing to do it for the Lord? When we are in love, we will do the word of God. When he asks of something, we will jump. When he asks of something, we don't say, hey God, do I have to do that? We say, no, God, how high do I have to jump? You want me to jump? How high? And I won't stop jumping, Lord, until you tell me to. So here's a little story. And a little reason why I'm telling this story. So uh, in Indianapolis this weekend, apparently it must be prom weekend at the high schools. I received two phone calls yesterday. Uh, requesting copies of the uh, prom letters that I've written to young ladies and young men. 
And also, for college students, either this past week or this upcoming week is the last week of school. Which brought me back to when I was in college. I was a freshman at the University of Southern Indiana. And at that point in my life, I was dating uh, my girlfriend, Stephanie Brown. And um, she was a senior in high school. I was a year older than her. And it was prom time. And she had asked me, Jonathan, are you going to come back and go to prom with me? Now, I knew she wanted me to go with her, but I didn't want to go. I was like, I'm not going to be the college guy that comes back to the high school prom. That's not really my thing. So although she wanted me to go, I did not fulfill her desire. I didn't fulfill her word. She wanted me to, but I didn't go. Now, this isn't the date. This is in the era of like, before email, before Facebook, so like we would write letters back and forth to each other every week. We would maybe talk on the phone once a month because it was a long distance phone call which cost a lot of money. So she had asked me in a letter, she said, well, um, is it okay if I go with a friend? And of course I was like, sure, whatever, I mean, sure. And then she told me who it was, and his name was Chris, and I was like, yeah, no competition, no problem at all. So I finished my, uh, my exams for my freshman year of, of college. I returned back to the south side of Indianapolis and prom had already happened, but lo and behold, Chris was not just Chris anymore. And I was not very happy. I was jealous and I was very concerned that the love of my life was being taken away by some guy. I realized that I had not kept the word or the desire that she wanted, so I said, okay, I have to win her heart back, so what will I do? If I lost her over prom, I would regain her over prom. So I decided that I, would, that I was going to create a prom for her to win her back. So I spent uh, the whole week long um, transforming my basement into a prom ballroom. I cleaned everything out, and moved furniture, and moved stuff, and then I created false walls, and I hung up Christmas lights and had stars hanging from the ceilings. Um, I made her a very cool invitation, so when I asked her to go to prom my junior year and senior year, I did it kind of like in creative ways. My junior year, I asked her standing on my head. My senior year, I had written on an egg that we were dying for Easter, uh, and then gave her the egg. Um, so this year, I used the family camcorder if you remember those old jalopies, and uh, made a pretty cool video asking her to go to prom with me. Um, and of course, a prom that didn't exist except for in my mind. So the video told her that she was supposed to be dressed in a prom dress, and I was going to pick her up, and I did. So I arrived uh, in the family uh, station wagon, and um, I was wearing a tux, and I had flowers for her. Um, after getting pictures taken by her family, I drove her around the block a few times so that she wouldn't know where we were going. And we arrived back at my house, and I had set the dining room table for our beautiful, elegant meal, and I cooked all of Stephanie's favorite foods, and because I was keeping her word, I wanted to please her, I cooked all of her favorite foods and served them on fine china. Macaroni and cheese, <laughs> hot dogs, and cheesy breadsticks. And for dessert, we had strawberry shortcake, and of course, all topped off, with wine, uh, with um, with milk in wine glasses. It was delicious. I blindfolded her again, drove her around the block a few times, brought her back directly to my house where we were at originally, took her down into the basement where prom continued. On a dual cassette tape player, I had made a jams tape of all of the, the best dance songs of 1995 and 96. So I mean, we were rocking out to, you know, MC Hammer and Vidal Ice and uh, R. Kelly and all of those, uh, those great ones. She was a big uh, country fan, so we had some Garth Brooks slow songs. And then lo and behold, the music stopped and a voice started announcing the king and queen of the prom. <laughs> The votes had been tallied. And a tiara and a crown were brought out and we were crowned king and queen of the prom. Now I will tell you, at the end of all of this, Chris didn't even exist. 
So why did I do all that? Because when we love, we will respond in amazing ways to the slightest word, desire, of the person or thing that we love. When we love, we will respond generously to the one or the thing or the person or the situation that we are madly in love with. Do we love the Lord? The Lord says, whoever loves me will keep my word. And whoever does not love me does not keep my words. If we love the Lord, we will go out of our way in the greatest extremes to serve Him and to give Him absolutely everything. So what is the Lord? What is the, what is the Lord's word in your life this Sunday? What is He asking? What is He inviting you to? And are you responding? Is He asking you to be more generous? Is he asking you to be a bigger servant? Is he asking you to love a family member or a friend that's been ostracized or lives on the fringes? Is he inviting you to share the gospel, to evangelize? Is he inviting you to be a priest or a religious or to serve or to be a missionary? And do we neglect those out of fear or do we generously respond and surrender everything by keeping the word of the Lord? May we who love much respond much. May we keep the words of God, the commandments of God, the invitations of God. And in doing so, may we be tremendous lovers. In doing so, may we do extraordinary things in amazing ways for the glory of God. And may it be known to all people that God is loved here and in all times.